This episode of Techzilla is sponsored by GoToAssist. I'm Patrick Norton. And I'm Robert Heron. Welcome to Techzilla, hands-on reviews of the latest tech and how to make the most out of the gear you've already got. Hey, whether you're a beginner or you are tech support for your friends and family, if you've got a question about tech or you want to know what a meplat is. Meplat. 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 I clearly don't. <laughs> I think we can get an answer for you, though. And if we don't, we'll track down <laughs> someone who does. Hey, the first question. Hold on, hold on. Oh, Before oh. we get to the first question, we have some news. You may not know, our beloved series producer, Roger Chang, has been struggling mightily with the selection of his replacement for his rim phone. He's still running it. M Mr. Blackberry? Yeah. Is he giving up the Blackberry? It's gotten even worse. Now he has to decide who's going to wait for the Samsung 4-inch Mini Galaxy that's supposedly <laughs> coming on October 11th. We thought Mini we'd give Galaxy. you guys a heads up on that. So instead of the big screen, it's got a, a, a more moderate screen. And of course, the Windows Phone 8 release date in the U.S. is rapidly approaching, Ooh. which of course has Roger all in a, a titter. I'll say oh. it's a titter. Uh, October 21 for the uh, Samsung, Nokia, uh, and HTC Windows Phone eight handsets. That's pre-orders for AT&T, so oh. it's exciting. And there's that Windows new, Phone 8 is October 26th. There's that new edge-to-edge -edge display, too, from Motorola as well yeah. that has people all excited. I think it has an Intel chip in it or something, I've heard. Yeah. <laughs> we wait with bated breath. <laughs> hey, our first question comes from Jonathan, who gripes. Hey, you think cloning my system onto a new SSD would be a piece of cake? Well, I've attempted it twice and it's been hell. I had a pricey Intel 320 series brick itself on me after a Cronus froze in its tracks and didn't move overnight. I did successfully clone my ThinkPad onto a Samsung 830 SSD using Norton Ghost, but none of the free versions have, uh, have ever worked for me. Uh, they all seem to inadvertently change the C drive letter or skip over one of the invisible system partitions necessary to boot the darn thing. Uh, now I'm trying my hand at cloning onto a Crucial M4 SSD. Different backup utilities have found no less than four partitions in my original hard drive. <laughs> the system, the reserved, and uh, the backup, and finally the actual C drive with Windows in it. Needless to say, nothing's worked and I'm getting nervous subjecting this drive to hour-long writes again and again. So, can you help a noob out? What's the deal with hard drive cloning and how can I get it all to work? Signed, Jonathan. First, Jonathan, take a deep breath. It's gonna take thousands and thousands and thousands of hours of writing to destroy your new SSD. So, you know, an hour here, an hour there, don't sweat it. Now, seriously, before you do anything, you need to evaluate what you're doing. Are you moving from a larger spinning hard drive to a smaller SSD? Doesn't matter if it's a drive full of data or a mostly empty drive, but some applications will have an issue cramming a larger partition into the smaller space. In theory, it's 2012. They all should be able to go, I have to map this set onto this set, and if this set is too big, it won't fit on that set, but sometimes it doesn't work. Two, are you using the latest drivers for your PC's chipset? Have you updated Windows 7? We're assuming Windows 7 because earlier versions don't support uh, the SSD trim command natively, and we want you to have trim running on your fabulous new SSD. Three, are you using the latest version of the cloning app? Ultra Disk Clone Utilities might have difficulties with SSDs and might not be able to align the partitions correctly on SSDs. Ooh. So let me scroll over here. We've got a Mac here and Reflect screen here. Um, Basically, uh, partition alignment refers to the physical sector offset of partitions. And uh, the latest Macroom Reflect, Reflect Free will have an option to clone back from a disk image to an SSD. Now, you can do this manually through the disk part command, but if you're running an up-to-date cloning application, you shouldn't need to. If you want to know the best way to clone a Windows partition, Roger, who's done more of them than he'd like to own up to, or he's just, he's, he's suffered through a lot of hard drive <laughs> Mr. upgrades, Chang and recommends the following. Use Windows 7's built-in backup to basically back up all the files on your drive that you're cloning from. Then you install the SSD, remove the old drive, and install a fresh copy of Windows on the SSD. This is going to take care of the whole alignment thing. Make sure you have the service pack already downloaded and ready to go after Windows installs. Finally, take your restoration, your restore, restore the backup you had on the external drive to your new SSD. That's going to cause a lot of happiness in your life, okay? That sounds like a good plan. I'm going to say this right now. I love your question, but I have run into nobody with as many SSD cloning problems as you have had. So I'm wondering if it's older software or if it's a firmware glitch on your motherboard. Um, another option you can try is a drive dock with drive cloning functionality. They cost Ooh. anywhere to $35 to $50. They probably are from a brand you never heard of, such as the fabulous Unitech, available at one of our local computer stores. Uh, what, what handle it, uh, the? 
you'll need to be cloning a drive uh, to an SSD of equal or greater ah, size. This isn't go. going to have the smarts to go, hey, I'm going to take this one terabyte green drive and stuff it onto this 80 gigabyte SSD drive. It won't do that. But if you're going sort of, you know, like to like size wise, it'll handle that. And Especially it's notebook painless. drives too. You yeah. probably have a better success right there. I shouldn't say success. <laughs> You're going to figure this out. But. It's funny. You say success, and I'm staring at a dead 320 <laughs> gigabyte a notebook nope. drive. How did you mess a notebook drive up? It's a long story. I, should I ask? Actually, I loaned it to somebody. <laughs> to that it's even more horrifying. <laughs> That's the quickest way to doom technology. By the way, one of the things I want to remind you, especially if you're moving to Windows 8, just install Windows 8 from scratch, okay? Yeah. It'll save you a lot of suffering, a lot of pain. If you're moving to a new drive, it is always a great time to do a fresh install. And uh, Rogers actually showed you how to do that and back up all of your files and settings from your previous installation. But if you're thinking about Windows 8, do yourself a favor, clean, fresh install. It'll be less suffering for you. All right, right now, let's take a moment to thank one of our sponsors. Work in IT is challenging enough, painful enough, when you're managing people in the same office you're in, but supporting members who work remotely, an entirely new level of pain and complexity. That's why you need Go to Assist by Citrix. You can take control of your entire IT world from one simple cloud-based platform. Go to Assist is easy to use, sets up in minutes, and it's from Citrix, a trusted leader in IT. Go to Assist provides live or unattended support from anywhere, even from your iPad. And with Go to Assist monitoring, you get customizable dashboards displaying performance of all networks, servers, and desktops. That not enough? How about proactive alerting that allows you to fix small issues before they become big problems? You're going to look like a hero, not a goat. Sign up for your special 30-day free trial. Visit gotoassist.com, click on the Try It Free button, and do us a favor. Use the promo code TECHZILLA. That's gotoassist.com, promo code TECHZILLA. Less pain in your IT life, and you're supporting your favorite tech program.